So this is the fifth week in our series on the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles, or Acts of the Holy Spirit, as I like to call it. Today is Pentecost Sunday. I want to thank the worship team, liturgical arts team, for coming in and hanging our new colors on the walls. And all of you who wore your flame colors today, red and orange and and uh, I think the fellowship hall is decorated as well. Judy's got some candles and flames burning in there as well. Um, so churches around the world are celebrating Pentecost today. The story, uh, and many of them will be reading from Acts chapter 2, uh, which we read two weeks ago about the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost to all the believers gathered in Jerusalem and, uh, and then spreading that out uh, by what the, the tongues of fire came down and suddenly people could speak new languages so that those who were gathered from around the world, Jews who had gathered for the Feast of Pentecost, um, which is a Jewish festival, uh, they could then hear the story of Jesus in their own language. So, we here at Summit, we're a little further along in the Pentecost Holy Spirit story. So, we're reading from Acts 3, which uh, Chuck read for us, and then I'm going to read a little bit from chapter 4. So, Chuck read the story of Peter and John going to pray in the afternoon uh, time of prayer and meeting a man who was lame from birth, and they look him in the eye, they reach out a hand, and they lift him up, and they, the, who knows the children's song on that one? Silver and gold have I none. I'm not going to sing it for you, the rest of it. But, such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And, and then he went dancing and singing and praising God. So the second reading today comes from Acts chapter 4. So, listen now. Again, for God's word. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees, Sadducees were different than Pharisees. Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead. Sadducees did not. That's how you can tell the difference because the Pharisees believed in resurrection. So they were hopeful, but the, sad, the Sadducees were sad, you see. That, that's a freebie this morning. <laughs> uh, they were especially, let's see, they were, the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles, Peter and John, were, reaching, were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. See, the Sadducees would not be happy about this. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Interesting, that's just men counted again there. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth whom you crucified. They like to remind them of that. Whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to humankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, 
They were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called Peter and John in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him, to Jesus, to God? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So you're gathered here today at a Presbyterian church. Uh, Presbyterians... uh, organize themselves regionally in what are called presbyteries and even larger groups of presbyteries known as synods. Presbyteries have different names. We're the Seattle Presbytery. There's the Presbytery of the Inland Northwest in uh, eastern Washington. There's the Northwest Coast Presbytery. These groups, groupings of churches are for um, connectional support and relationship building and shared ministry and also for accountability. So before we begin, I want to pray, and then I have a little story about a presbytery. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I have a story today about the presbytery of the heated waters and a recent meeting of their Commission on Ministry, or COM, The COM has called a special meeting to deal with a situation that has come to their attention. Two men who have been calling themselves pastors have started a new new church in town. Stories of this new congregation, Resurrection Presbyterian Church, have made their way to the Presbytery offices and to other churches around. It's all over Twitter and Facebook And there's some fan pages and a few blogs from some of the members. They don't have a building yet because they're meeting in parks or people's homes or school gyms. And even a couple of times they've had some gatherings in the parking lot of Front and Center Presbyterian Church downtown. It's been a little hard for the COM to track these guys down because by the time the elders and pastors on the commission uh, meet... The Resurrection Church is on to a new location. The problem is there's no record of these pastors anywhere in the PCUSA. No no trace of them at any seminary. No presbytery has claimed them as inquirers or candidates. No ordination paperwork anywhere. They are total unknowns. And certainly no one has given them permission to start a new church development in this presbytery. And the bigger problem is that people keep joining up with their church. All the congregations across the presbytery of the heated waters keep reporting huge numbers of members, elders, music directors, and youth leaders. Even the seniors group at Redeemer Press have all gone AWOL. And word is, they're pounding down the doors at Resurrection Press, except, of course, there are no doors. Just stories of amazing stuff. People with diseases completely healed. Kids with disabilities walking without their wheelchairs or braces. Families living on the streets because of a hard economy, now living with families who have much to share. And there's a group that hangs out with teenagers at the Youth Detention Center on Monday nights. Another group that have built and run a home for kids aging out of the foster care system. And the list goes on and on. All because these two men and their friends keep preaching and teaching and healing in the name of Jesus. 
Pastors and sessions across the presbytery are all in a buzz. Some are excited and want to know more. Others are bothered that too many people are excited and there's no order or decency about it. (laughs) Finally, at their latest gathering in the front and center church parking lot, the one next to the freeway bridge where the homeless hang out, there was a man who's been panhandling his whole life, sitting there at the corner of First and Main, his legs wrapped under him in that nasty old blanket. No one's ever seen him walk. Sometimes they see him in a wheelchair. Mostly he's just pushed himself around on his hands. But these two pastors were down there and they prayed over this guy. And now he's been healed. He asked for some spare change and instead he got dancing legs. He still needs a shower and some clean clothes, but he's walking, he is jumping, he is dancing. So Reverend uh, Bob Big Shot, senior pastor of the Front and Center Church, who also happens to be chair of the COM, was in his office working on his sermon on justice and mercy, and he heard a commotion outside his office and went outside to check it out. He couldn't believe it. Here they were in the flesh and causing all kinds of trouble just outside his office. The COM was meeting tomorrow, and so he invited these guys to stop by around 2. He wanted to hear more about what they were up to. So they showed up right on time, jeans and t-shirts. They even brought their new friend, the homeless guy who was healed yesterday. Looks like he's had a shower and a good breakfast. They look around them as they walk in, and they didn't know there'd be such a crowd. No one on the COM was going to miss that meeting. Pastor Big Shot started the hearing, as it certainly started to feel like, by asking them, so tell us, who gave you permission to do all of this? And they smiled as if they were happy to be asked. Then one of them took a deep breath, and the room sort of filled with energy as he started to speak. Well, if you mean, how is it that this man here, whom you've all passed on the streets and have seen his disability, how is it that he walked here on his own two feet and stands here healed? Well, we've got nothing to hide. We just prayed over him in the name of Jesus Christ, and he jumped up and started dancing. It wasn't us. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that brought Jesus back from the dead and brought wholeness back to this man's body. We're just witnesses. So COM asked a few more questions, found out that Peters and Johnson were their names, that they'd grown up in the presbytery and loved the church. They wanted it to grow, wanted it to be a vibrant place with truth and justice and the work of the Spirit. And then the COM asked them to step out into the hallway. What are we going to do with these guys? Pastor Ed Orderly of the Not a Sinner Among Us congregation asked. (laughs) And then Elder Helen Lovemall of the We Care Presbyterian Church gently offered, the whole county has heard about the great things these people are doing. We better tread thoughtfully here. Pastor Big Shot added, but we've got to stop this thing from spreading. It's tearing our churches apart, having all our people listening to these guys, uneducated, unordained. They need to be put in their place. So they brought Peters and Johnson back in and told them that they need to stop preaching and healing, stop calling themselves pastors, and above all, told them not to use the name of Jesus Christ, or especially the good name of the Presbyterian Church, in any of their communications or messages. They were welcome to become inquirers, and apply to seminary and to begin the ordination process. But until they'd gone through all the right processes, the name of Jesus and the PCUSA were not to be bandied about carelessly. (laughs) Peters spoke calmly but with conviction. Well, thanks. Thanks for inviting us here. The cookies and coffee are great. We've always loved this church, this presbytery. And we can see you are good-hearted elders sitting on this commission. Judge then for yourselves whom we should listen to. You here today are the God who raised Jesus from the dead and raised this man from his disability. 
We know we can't keep quiet about the things we have seen and heard. The members of the COM were stumped. They all sat there quietly as the three men walked out. But the parking lot erupted with singing and dancing as they left the building, for the people were praising God for all that had happened. So you probably figured out there's not really a presbytery of the heated waters or a front and center Presbyterian church. <laughs> not, not exactly, anyway. The story, this is the story that unfolds in Acts chapter 4. And it's a story we usually read from the perspective of Peter and John, from the viewpoint of Christians excited about Jesus and raising our fists at the Sanhedrin, the, the high priest, the, the Jews that were too uh, religious and who stood in their way. But I tell this story through the lens of a 21st century church, the Presbyterian church. It feels a little different, doesn't it? I'm curious, what did you notice felt differently, or how um, uncomfortable did it make you at times to, to hear it told that way? I'm curious what, what your thoughts were. They didn't fall? <laughs> I forgot to mention that part. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You felt empathetic for the Presbytery? Yeah. Yeah, there is some empathy there, though. This is an interesting flip of the script, isn't it? Mm hmm And I'm currently serving on Seattle Presbytery's COM. And so I just was imagining it from that side, too. What are we doing here? We need to ask some questions. We have accountability. We have things, trusted processes. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? We know in later conversations we'll learn um, in Acts that there will be people in these situations who are going to start paying different attention and say, you know, if God's up to something here, it's not going to stop. So there's wisdom in this room, but it's a moment, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. The Holy Spirit moves people to turn the page, to bring healing, repentance, repentance to speak truth and resurrection good news. People in power or people who are just super comfortable with the way things are, they often, first response is resist the Holy Spirit. And it's this knee-jerk reaction to just shut it down. We could change up the modern-day version and tell a story about people advocating for race equity and bringing forward not just one person's story, but hundreds, millions of people in our history who have been unable to stand up and walk freely under slavery, Jim Crow, red line laws, and all the things that have happened since then because of that. They could hear the voices of the, we could hear the voices of those in power say, yes, well, we see your point. We can't deny it. Your Juneteenth celebration is nice, but we must stop this equity movement from spreading any further. Or we could tell the story of the LGBTQ friends being seen and heard and affirmed for their gifts, for their belovedness. See them rise up and sing and dance and testify to God's power and love in the world. And then hear parents and even pastors show up to school board meetings across the country and say, yes, well, we love everyone, but we must stop this thing from spreading any further. We have to shut down these conversations about diversity and inclusion in our schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or we could tell a story about lawmakers and lobbyists who hear the anguished, desperate pleas of the families and survivors of gun violence, see the data on every other country compared to the U.S. and say, yes, we feel for you. We can't deny that there's a problem, but we must stop people from spreading this story that the guns we make so much money on are a problem. Friends, it comes down to the question that Peter and John ask. Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to Jesus? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about 
what we have seen and heard. Friends here at Summit Avenue, may we continue to follow and trust the Holy Spirit to lead us into hard spaces in our world. May we have the courage to look the wounded and broken in the eye and extend our hands to lift them up together. And when people try to shut it down, which they will, may it be said of us that we could not help but speak of the good things we have seen and heard. The things of Jesus, our resurrected Lord, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.